it seems because we were doing this every week that uh, we haven't been together for so long. It seems like about a year and a half, almost. <laughs> Felt kind of strange to miss last week, but uh, we'll see how it goes with every couple of weeks and then uh, get some feedback on it. But welcome. It's really nice to have you again for meditation. Um, of course, a shout out to uh, all of you dear folks uh, back east, Midwest, Phoenix, uh, Colorado, Chicago, Oregon, on and on. Uh, a great group of people. So thank you very much for joining. It's always a great pleasure. I want to talk just a little bit tonight before we uh, dive into some uh, another level of the breath work some breath work that'll help you, I think, uh, feel another level of uh, clarity and uh, precise it's with your meditation. But uh, first of all, I want to talk about, uh, I sent out everyone a link to a video and it was by Dr. Zach Bush. Did you see the video? I did. Uh, quite a phenomenal gentleman. And uh, he was talking about uh, a lot of the climate changes going on and how um, with the COVID that is really something that Mother Earth is doing really as an upgrade in the sense that uh, Earth is always evolving. It's a totally conscious system. And this conscious system is always finding ways to continue to adapt and to grow and to unfold and to heal itself. And so, um, this is something that is part of a, a virus chain. Uh, there's always new viruses occurring on the planet. And uh, if we are in our own personal systems are not well adapted with strength and vitality and wholeness and health, then we can be susceptible to these things. And so it's not so much that it's uh, something that is terribly wrong as it is just showing humanity that we have lost our connection really to the finest of foods, the finest of air, the purity of pristine water. And he was talking about how so much of what really is also part of this is all the pollutants that we have sprayed all around the earth uh, since right after World War II, we began to spray DDT. Uh, now it's a glycophase. And of course, the area of Wuhan, where the virus supposedly began, is one of the areas where they uh, spray some of the strongest um, sprays. And um, the air then takes it up into very tiny, small uh, droplets of, um, into the atmosphere. And of course, the first thing that happens, it blows across the United States. And then we are uh, picking up all of these droplets within the air particles. And what it creates, he said, is cyanide. And cyanide then is breathed into the body. And if we don't have a very strong resistance, it can then begin to break down uh, some of the blood. And so it's really at one level, yes, it's the ignorance of all the sprays that we've used, but it's also inviting through the virus humanity to upgrade their physical health and their vitality. And so he then went on to talk about that it's our soils that have become so depleted. I was just chatting with Dew before uh, we started that she saw a very, a wonderful movie that I've also seen by Woody Harrelson on Netflix. What's the exact name of it? Kiss the Ground. Kiss the Ground. And it's that almost all of the dirt or almost all the soil I should say on the planet is now dead. If you pick up true soil, there will be so many microbes and so many um, small bacteria that literally over probably in one handful of dirt, uh, 10 to 15 billion uh, small microbes, animals uh, in the dirt, uh, in the soil. But when you pick up dirt, which has been uh, what we've used to farm the land for now the last since uh, World War II, that all of the sprays and the fertilizers They've literally killed all the microbes. And so now it's just dirt. And dirt has no life, no life force within it. And so the only way one can get a crop is to spray a fertilizer, which is just another chemical. 
And so uh, both Dr. Zach Bush, as well as this beautiful uh, video by uh, Woody Harrelson, Kiss the Earth, Kiss the Dirt? Oh, kiss the Ground. Kiss the Ground. I was close. I was close. Uh, it talks about how we can replenish the soils and bring them back to life, which will be um, hopefully the saving grace of humanity. Dr. Zach Bush also went on to talk about, though, that we are in the middle of the sixth great extinction. There has been five extinctions before. And if we don't change our ways radically, which I've also talked about with you, that uh, we will continue to move to an even uh, greater extinction of life upon the planet. But because he also knows, as I know, that nothing really dies, it simply changes form, uh, he brought forth the idea, which is the truth, that after each extinction that has happened on the planet, the diversity of life that erupted after that was so profound, so new and beautiful, that if this continues this way, uh, Mother Earth will only repair herself and bring forth a whole nother level of beauty, diversity, a whole nother level of uh, animal life force, because that's what Mother Earth does. She goes through these dying out periods, extinctions, and then renews herself with an even greater biodiversity. So I really loved what he had to say about uh, the possibilities of uh, change and uh, what is happening. And so he doesn't put it into a negative context. He was uh, quite positive, both about the COVID, about uh, what is happening with this uh, extinction event that is taking place. I've also felt very positive about it myself, that it's nothing to worry about, that those who continue to do their spiritual uh, sadhana, that continue to uh, have their practice, they will then be taken to places of grace, prosperity, health. And so there's nothing to worry about. In fact, it's the worry and the fear that we might have that then breaks down the biology of the body. And thus we are becoming then uh, susceptible to some of these things that can then get into our system. But when we are in a very positive outlook, very excited, enthusiastic, it literally creates within our energy field, as we well know, a beautiful vibration of harmony and peace that keeps us uh, in health and vitality. So we have the tools and we have the keys. So uh, as we practice them more and more, we can be well assured we'll be in the right place at the right time. So very exciting. The breath work I wanted to talk a little bit about tonight is what we're learning in this particular meditation technique that is so unique, the star tetrahedron meditation is that we're learning how to live more as souls. Uh, some people call this ascension. Ascension is not really leaving the body. It's simply creating a frequency or a vibration that is what we call the Christ field. And the Christ field then is the full assimilation of the soul the great and divine being of light you are to be able to be lived in and through the physical form. But what happens is we begin to live simultaneously beyond the form, not disassociated from it, but knowing that this is the vessel that is able to take us on the journey of this great earthly experience but living beyond more the body, we feel ourselves living in the fields of energy that exist around us. We've often spoke about the Taurus field, which is the field of divine mind that exists around us. So this is the image of that Taurus field. Within the center is the golden area of the soul. And it is then the blue, the Taurus field of divine mind that is about 12 feet above, 35 to 40 feet around, and 12 feet beneath that is the architect. It's the divine of the divine mind that creates the soul. The soul then weaves its way down through time and space, gathering information 
about the yin, the yang, uh, power and love, all the aspects of consciousness. The soul then takes all that information and it begins to esoterically collapse it back into a wave form that is a perfect crystalline form, the star tetrahedron. And the star tetrahedron then is the assimilation of the soul into a prismatic crystalline structure that in its perfection is the mystical marriage of all that is of power and all that is of love, and it is then assimilated into union once again. And so the soul is no longer living in diversity. It is living now in union once again with and through the divine. And what happens, you see, then we are able to live more beyond the physical body. We realize that these are the intuitive levels of consciousness. It's the dimensions of what we would even call the internet of our awareness, that we're living now more in the internet of the great being I am, that then the physical body takes us on the journey, but our identification is no longer I am simply a physical form. I am a great and realized being that can even let the body go and know fully well without literally physically dying that I could simply assemble another physical form for the great journey of creation. So in the breath work, it's then beginning to create, you see, as we do our breath work, more space within the molecules of the body. And that's what the breath is doing. It's letting us expand more and feel an awareness beyond the body. So what I'd like to do in the breath work today, as we breathe in quite deeply and let the belly expand out, diaphragm down, we're, as we all well know, we're breathing out from the interior of the heart. When the star tetrahedron is turning, it's the rotation of these triangulations of energy that then opens in the very middle of the star tetrahedron, a great doorway. And of course, that doorway, it then enters back into what we would call the void. And the void is where, again, spirit, that which we would call source, exists in its infinite potential, waiting to arise forth from out of the void into expression. But it's only through the Christ field that that which is it to win the void can then find a doorway back into this dimension and become manifest and physical. So we become the doorway for source. And so when we open the doorway and we're now breathing, our breath is then breathing source from inside out. So not only are we breathing oxygen, but equally important, we are feeling that we are then from the open doorway breathing spirit out. And when we're doing the breath work today, I'd like to invite you with the in-breath to feel your breathing from out of the open doorway. But then as you exhale, I'd like to invite you for the first exhalation to feel that you're now breathing out in front of the body about four, five, six feet. And you're beginning to feel that you can then look back at the body. And then as you hold for a couple of counts, once again, deep, deep in breath, breathing in. Filling yourself with the knowledge I am source. And then with the out breath, I'd like to invite you then to feel yourself breathing out the back of the heart. And you're breathing about five to six feet in back of you, where you begin to have the feeling, the identification, I am looking at myself from the back. And then once again, in breath, we're then breathing in deeply, and then we're going to be moving then to the left. And we're then sitting out here five or six as we watch the breath goes out. The breath is taking us out five or six feet. We're observing ourselves sitting out here, observing us sitting here as a physical form. And then out to the right, where we do the same thing. And then above, and then once again, below. And then last breath, we will simply breathe in deeply and then feel the full, expansive outer field 
of the great being we are all around us. Okay, so again, it's somewhat simple. And as you uh, play with it in your meditation, before you begin your meditation, you'll find it'll be very helpful in calming, quieting the body, less identification with sometimes the tension within the physical form and allowing you to feel more of the expansive nature of the great being you are. So once again, let me just kind of reiterate in breath, we're breathing from out of the interior. As we're breathing out, we are filling the field, filling the field with this breath of life. And as we are exhale, we are watching and letting the breath take us out to about five or six feet in front of us, where we then observe ourselves looking back at the body. It'll be maybe just a feeling that you're out there. But then once again, breathing in, opening the doorway, and then to the back. And so I'm going to take you through the whole system of front, back, up, down, and all around. And what this does, you see, it begin to identify then with all of the aspects of creation. The right, the left, the up, the down, the front, the back. And so all of these coordinates you see of the front, the back, the right, the left, the up, and the down, is really what then creates your point of recognition within time, space, universe. But you can then, with the thought, you see, move this point of consciousness anywhere within the universe. And once again, know that you can reassemble yourself, once again, feeling front, back, right, left, up, and down, and have your grounded identification once again. So it's always a grounded state of movement within the universe. So let's go ahead and close the eyes. And let's go ahead and just take a couple of slow, deep breaths. The belly is going down and out and you're breathing six feet in back of you. And you see yourself now in back of you observing yourself. Do that to the left at your pace. To yourself sitting out there on the left observing the body. With the in-breath, breathing again from inside out of the heart. Exhaling out to the right. Observing yourself sitting. And once again, very deep, slow, slow breath, breathing in from the open chest. And as you're breathing out, you're now breathing up, up. You're now sitting above you, looking down, observing the body. Breathing in slowly and deeply from the interior chest, source. You're breathing in source. And the exhale now is beneath you. And you're looking up at the body. Now this time, as you're breathing in, once again, very slow, extend the breath, breathing in, breathing in. And now you feel yourself like a balloon as you're exhaling, you're feeling yourself up, down, front, back, and all around.
And then let's come back into the now. So if you would have any questions about that, you can put them on the chat. If you have any questions about that. Do as you were doing that, any feelings or experience? <clears throat> Simple, difficult? I did pretty well with uh, the, from at the front and from the back and from the sides. Mm -hmm. But it was more difficult um, and even pretty good from looking down. But it, it was difficult to be down below. Right, looking, looking up. up. Right. That was the hardest right. direction for me to get a, a strong feeling of that. Yeah, because, you know, our identification is it's solid earth. How can I be below me in earth? But you see, it's really all just 99.999% space. It's our perceptions that so polarize us into the density of this dimension that we, again, agree that it's going to be solid. But in fact, it's very fluid. And so that's what this particular uh, breath work is doing. It's giving us the idea of the fluidity of consciousness as well as the fluidity of the physical form. It's not such a, a, a dense, dense form. Anything coming up on chat? Uh, no, not yet. So once again, as we are doing the breath work, it's a very slow, deep inhalation hopefully even counting more than four. Uh, when I count, because my breath is so expansive, as I'm breathing from the interior doorway in this particular exercise, it's at least to the count of six. And as I hold for a couple of counts, and as I exhale, I can watch, I esoterically watch myself with the out breath. I watch myself breathing out in front of me, breathing out, breathing out. And then I then see and feel myself sitting out in front of me for a couple of counts, looking back at myself sitting here. And then once again, as I then begin to in breath, I know that I'm breathing from the interior doorway. Filling myself with source and then out breath. I'm allowing the breath to take me. I'm following with the breath out the back. Sitting in back of me, then observing Gary sitting here. But my consciousness is back there. And then once again, deep, deep in breath. Holding for a couple of counts, and as I out breath, I'm watching myself move on the in breath, out breath, out, out, out. Then I'm observing myself sitting on the left. I do the same with the right. I then do it to the up. I then do it to the down. And as I practice that, it begins to feel that I can effortlessly begin to feel myself moving ever more into the fields of energy around me which allows the body, you see, to begin to uh, release its identity of simply being a body. And again, this is somewhat important in our work because we are beginning to identify with the great soul being of light we are, which is this crystalline field of consciousness that holds the body in suspension. It's the great fields of divine mind, you see, that are holding the body in a molecular construct but we have become so identified with just the body in its density that it then becomes sometimes constricted, restricted, and diseased. But if there's life flowing through it effortlessly and easily, we're all the time then filling ourselves with life and life force, which is ever more health and vitality. So I'd like to invite us to do that particular breath exercise one more time. And I'm going to allow you to do it at your own pace. But again, breathing in very deeply. And as you're breathing in from the open doorway, you're breathing in source. You're going to allow the breath to take you in front of you. 
and then doing these six quadrants, front, back, left, right, up, and down. So we'll do that for about uh, three minutes or so, three or four minutes, just to give you a chance to really go through the exercise on your own. So be precise and be focused, and let's see where it takes you. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Okay. When I do that uh, breath work, I do it, of course, before every meditation. And I would uh, encourage you, it really sets the tone for the meditation because it allows the body to expand and for myself, I feel such a joyous, uh, almost ecstatic feeling, a feeling so light and so airy that I can feel myself as I do it more and more now and identifying with the great being I am that's holding my body in a molecular construct. It allows me to feel and experience the meditation with much more dynamic light and uh, so much more effortless. So I would sure like to encourage you to uh, practice and work with that particular breath work. And as you do practice it, you see, you'll find very easily that as you're then filling yourself from source, and then as you're watching the breath move out from you, it's the breath that then takes you so easily out in front, and then you're sitting out in front, and then you begin to see yourself sitting back here. And it's a real joyous feeling for the body to feel itself being observed and recognized by the great being you are. It has almost like this ecstatic feeling of uh, bliss that begins to move through it. So I think you'll find it quite beautiful as you uh, play with it. 
So all of our work, of course, is about the magic of the star tetrahedron. It's a, a very deep level of initiatory work when it comes to spiritual work and uh, meditation. Because we're moving into complete silence. It's not a thinking. It's not an examination. It's simply creating through the focusing of light, which is the power of the mind, power of light, which is within the area of the third eye, the pineal gland, I ignite the light, the light of the soul. I then focus the light to the heart chakra and I illuminate with imagination the star tetrahedron. And of course, imagination is the key because what we can imagine and then hold attention and light upon, it creates it to be so. If you hold the light of attention upon worry, you're going to attract things in your life to worry about. If you hold the light of the mind, I'm not feeling prosperous, money will be difficult. If you hold the light of the mind focused upon I'm not feeling good, disease will come to you. So we create our reality, and it is the focusing of the light of the mind upon the imagination and feeling nature that creates our life. And so this is then the star tetrahedron that is above, below, and all around. We call it the Christ field. It's not a consciousness. It's a field of light emanation. The upper triangulation within the star tetrahedron is then turning left to right clockwise. From your left shoulder to your right shoulder clockwise. The lower triangulation, divine power, is turning right to left counterclockwise. And as the star tetrahedron is turning, the real magic of it is that it opens an interdimensional doorway in the very center of the star tetrahedron, which is within the area of the chest, the heart. It literally opens this great doorway back into void source. And then arising forth as a living spring, you feel yourself as source arising forth. And as this arising forth of the living spring is taking place, this is what you are. You are source. You are source that has created a physical form within which to experience a three-dimensional magnificent plane of reality. And so when you're breathing the open doorway, it is you as source coming out. It is the consciousness that you are that is source that is then feeling it as golden, sparkling, effervescent light coming from you. And you then subtly give it a feeling intention. It then becomes a holographic manifestation of reality. So we literally become the creator being. And if you and I and some of us are the greater creator beings, we can simply begin to change the vibration of the planet very quickly. So... Again, great possibilities of uh, change and transformation before us. So I'm going to take you through the full assembly of the star tetrahedron and follow along and we'll meditate for about 30, 35 minutes. And then we'll see if we have any thoughts or questions afterwards. So we close the eyes and we feel the body relaxing, letting go. We've already begun to realize I am not the body. And with the breath, we feel ourselves living in the fields around us. And as we feel the body relaxing, we bring our attention between the eyebrows. And drawing a line straight back within the approximate center point of the head, we ignite the light of divine mind. Just as a light bulb would turn on, you ignite the light 
within the head. And holding attention here, we can feel the light increasing. Imagine the waters of the brain, the mind filled with light. We can focus the light to the heart chakra at the sternum and illuminate the star tetrahedron. It may be more of a feeling than a visual, but simply go with what you experience. The upper triangulation is turning left to right clockwise. Lower triangulation turning right to left counterclockwise. This opens a magnificent doorway in the very center of the chest, back into the realms of source spirit, the void, and arising forth as a living spring spirit. It touches the facets of the spinning star to become sparkling golden effervescent light, healing and renewing every cell in the body and flowing out into the world, bringing peace on earth. I will join with you and gather all of us into light activation.
and welcome home. Very, very expansive, uh, dynamic uh, meditation. Thank you so very, very much, my friends. Quite uh, beautiful, to say the least. Quite beautiful. So I'd really like to encourage you to work with uh, that particular breath, um, really expanding from inside out and then beginning to feel yourself at points all around <clears throat> the exterior and begin to have more of an identification of uh, I am the field of light and energy rather than just the physical form. I've uh, found that it's created another level of uh, very beautiful expansion within my own uh, life, my own consciousness. And um, of course it's October, so I get to wear the pumpkin shirt. So thank you very much. <laughs> The pumpkin shirt. Next week, I'll, I'll have a pumpkin on my head. So I'll, I'll look even more pumpkin-y. I'd like to add in a couple comments. Um, you probably saw this. Mm -hmm. About um, that it, how he viewed the different viewpoints. Yeah, if you all read your uh, chat room, uh, Ed has some very beautiful comments about the way that he's experiencing uh, moving outside of the body. And of course, all very, very valid. So, but again, uh, work with that particular experience and build upon it, and you will find that your meditation will flow much more effortlessly. And you'll begin to know that uh, I am the being that has created a body rather than I am the body. So, we'll see you again, my friends, in two weeks. And I will, um, of course, meet everyone at uh, 730 in the morning and 430 in the afternoon for daily meditations. And that's our time. Yeah. Pacific Standard Time. But no matter when you uh, meet, uh, it's all really within the fields of uh, consciousness. So uh, I'll see you there, whether it's the same time or another time you'll be there all right loves thank you so very very much a very beautiful exciting meditation